Hi everyone, Eileen here. I'm making two videos this weekend for you. I'm sorry I've been missing for a while, but Lavinia Stamps have got some new release stamps on their website. And you pop over and have a look. They're, they are just fabulous. Uh, today I'm using uh, Toad Lodge. It's so sweet, it's adorable, and this card is easy to do. So that, um, uh, mainly for me, <laughs> so that I can get back into the swing of doing these video tutorials from me to you. Right, let's get going then. I have a piece of Lavinia Stamps Multifarious cardstock in white. And I've cut this topper to 14 centimetres by 14 centimetres. Now I'm going to use my Sweet Poppy Stencils Square Aperture Stencil. But if you haven't got one of these, you can use some stencil tape and just make a frame right the way round the edges of your card. This is an easy thing for me. and I make so many of these cards. So this stainless steel stencil is just invaluable. I'm also using um, a magnetic sheet to hold it in place and to give me a firm grip. So I'm just, test, just checking to see that the topper is in the middle with the, uh, just a narrow border all the way around. Pop it down onto the magnetic sheet. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I'm going to use um, Kitsch Flamingo Distress Ink. Speckled Egg Distress Ink. I thought I'd use my favourites. <laughs> Couple of makeup brushes. And the fabulous, one of the fabulous new stencils from Lavinia Stamps called flower petals quite a large st uh, stencil I was popping it on not going to bother taping it down because it's just going to take a few seconds to do and then inking up first with the kitsch flamingo Take off a little onto my copy paper or the mat if you're not using copy paper as a base. Just to check that it isn't too wet. And then very gentle in the middle. That's it. And now onto speckled egg. Need some more colour on. Yep, and pop that down and again, blending it over a lot of the pink, but still leaving a spot or two of pink so that it gets its own space and identity. Nearly there, a bit more down here, and then going back to the pink, a little bit more up here. Let's have a look. Yes, I think that should do like so. So I've just got the image of the stencil right in the middle of the card. Ah, what I didn't do. So going back a step, see getting carried away. I needed to put a pencil line right round this frame. And that's why I'm using the stencil in the first place so that Probably would be a good idea to remember to do it. <laughs> I'm really chilled today, though, so uh, hey-ho, you're going to see it. Mistakes as well. Right. So that's it. Remove my magnetic sheet. And I'm now using my foam stamping pad. You can use a, a stamp press if you wish, no problem. So the first of the stamps is this 
so cute. Toad Lodge, isn't it adorable? And there's Fine Claire Nocturne. Quite a juicy pad this so that I should get a really good impression and I'm just going to pop this down just over onto the left hand side and up from the bottom did I tell you the size of my topper 14 centimetres by 14 centimetres, just in case I didn't. And apologies if I'm repeating myself. Look at that fantastic image. Oh, I want to live in there. <laughs> okay, now, next it is. The next stamp is birthday wishes. I'm going to pop that in. But before I do, I'm just going to get an eraser. Because I want to pop this birthday wishes over here, but I want to remove this line first. And if I rub out the line after I've stamped, I reckon I'm going to smudge the ink. So... There we go. Birthday wishes. Now this comes from a set called, now I can find it, here it is. This comes from a set called Heartfelt Verses and you get four stamps, with love, just for you, birthday wishes and with love and sympathy. You'll find this, of course, on the Lavinia Stamps website. And again... I'm going to use this fine clear nocturne. I'm going to pop that so that it, the um, S of wishes is right in that center line. And hopefully, if it's straight, the rest of the stamp will follow. <laughs> And it will be straight as well. Just gently holding it, not pressing too heavily. Don't want to rock the stamp down and up. Oh, yeah, that looks good. Okay. Cleaning my stamps off with a uh, damp cloth. I don't use cleaner or anything like that on them. And then a dry cloth to wipe them off after. Now it's a bit of colouring in and I'm using polychromous pencils for this. I've got one, two, three, four. I've got half a dozen, but I'm not sure if I'll use them all. There's oranges, yellows, and there's a, um, a really pretty green. And this one is called Earth Green. It's very pale green. It's lovely. Before I do start, I just want to double check that the ink is dry on my image. Remove this. And then away we go. So, I start off with a very pale lemon. And I'm not being too careful. I'm just going to go over with the whole image. Leaving these loops in the design, these ribbon effects around the uh, roof of the cottage. Or lodge, sorry. <laughs> Leaving those white still. 
just very gentle. And then I'll need a darker colour. I'm just going to go in and give it a little bit. I'm not the world's greatest colourist, but I'm getting better because practice, isn't it? Practice makes perfect. And these, this is ideal. And the shading on this roof of the lodge and on the... Um, building of the of the lodge itself and that shading is a guideline of where to put your darker colors you know sort of it's got the shadow built in and i do follow those guidelines so a little bit more color again not being too careful and, and then going on to a darker color still again i'm still in the yellow and the shading is underneath these sort of ribbons around the roof. And you see there's tiny little lines underneath. So I'm just giving that a darker tone. And there is a darker tone there. Just underneath again. It's not all the way across though. And down this side, presumably, that is where the light is shining from. Sounds quite professional, doesn't it? Yeah, well, don't worry, I'm guessing. <laughs> I haven't got a clue. <laughs> now I'm going on to orange, yeah? So I'm coming up, I want to come up from the bottom and give it a sort of a bit more depth of colour at the bottom. I don't want to go up too far, though. Or just bring it to life and I think it looks pretty too and then back to that shading again with the orange coming down give that a don't come down too far though I've got white bits showing on here and I quite honestly I want to keep them but I'm going to go on this side bit and then just not so far there and then a bit more on this one at the bottom. Again, put as much pencil on and do you get the look that you like. It doesn't matter if it's not literal, you know, is it in real life? Because this isn't real life. So you just colour it in until you like you the look that you're getting. And that's basically what I'm doing. I don't sort of take much notice of shadows and shading and stuff because I'm still learning about those and I am learning too I'm, I'm learning quite a bit and following YouTubes about how to colour in um, right now I want, I want another some more yellow here I think just to lighten that up a bit now I'm just going to look at my original card Oh yes, and then I put in, I put in some of this green on this bottom bit here, but again lightly. And this is the beauty of pencils as well, because if you if you make a mistake, you can just get an eraser and rub it out. And it's also the rubber is also good for adding highlights, so you can just lighten up areas and. And you think, oh, that looks good. I'm obviously more skilled than I thought. And it's all down to the fact that you've rubbed out the colour. <laughs> right, what do you reckon? I don't think that's too bad. So a little bit more on this bottom bit here. Just with the darker of the orange colour. Let's just give that more there. You can spend longer than I am on this and and hopefully you'll get a really lovely effect. But I'm not too fussed about this. I think this doesn't look too bad. And this very pale green there, just adding a few bits here and there. Now the cottage itself, I wasn't tempted to 
colour in all the brickwork because I wanted the eye drawn to the background and also to the roof of the lodge. So um, I've left that white, but I did use some pink, I see, on the um, stones. So I'm just going to get a pink. And this is the pink that I use. Again, this is polychromous, but you can use any pencils. Just make me odds, really. Um, and this is called cinnamon, and this is a really pretty pink. So I just very gently, lightly, pop some pink in the to colour in the door. so and uh, and then I added just some shading underneath the cottage to sort of ground it again with the same cinnamon color it's very relaxing coloring in isn't it I feel really chilled is that coming over I hope so because I'm really enjoying this so and then taking my eraser I'm just going to take away some of the color from the middle of the door do you notice how that lifts the color away and it adds a, I think it adds a different dimension you know I'm just using an eraser okay I think I'm more or less done I don't think the coloring in on this one is as nice as on this one but I'm still liking it I wonder what if I've put pink on there I think I may have done so going back in and put some pink as well adds a warmer tone doesn't it see you can go on forever yes I'm loving that Right, enough. Next and last is two things, actually. I'm going to add some gold um, dots on this. And this is um, Art Alchemy Sparks paint. It's an acrylic paint. And this colour is called Dragon's Eye. And this is from uh, Prima uh, colour. So Art Alchemy Sparks Paint, acrylic, dragon's eye. You can see it's well loved, well used. In fact, it's nearly empty, this pot. So that will be in one moment. And I'm applying the paint with these tools that you're supposed to use for parchment, aren't you? Right, but I use them to paint with. Oh, it's, which is the one that I'm after? That one, I think. Yes. So I'm using this. Pop that down there. Into the pot and pop a little bit onto the side. Here. Like so. And then into the paint, I've just cleaned off the tip of this tool. And I'm just going to add some tiny... You can use a toothpick for this if you haven't got one of these. But I find that they are easy to use. And so far, they've worked perfectly each time. So how many have I got there? One, two, three, four. Don't want to overdo it. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, 
three, four, five, six. One more, eh? Yeah, get the seven done. I have one there, I think. So just little blobs of gold paint. It's delicate, this image. And I wanted to maintain that delicacy. So I'm not using enameled accents. They're too, maybe too heavy. But that gold paint is ideal. So that's that. And then the final thing is, with a black pen, I'm going to highlight this border, get rid of that gold paint before it goes everywhere. So coming down, just following the pencil line. It's not straight, it's sort of wiggly, don't matter at all, don't worry. There we are. I'll be using another one of the stamps from the new collection, new release tomorrow. And again, it will be quite a simple card so that um, I'm relaxed and then away we go every weekend for as long as I can. Right. Oh, missed one there. So now I'm going to do a double line. Deliberately coming out to make it squiggly. And this is a black pigment ink pen from Uniball and it's fine line. It's a fine line tip to it. There we go. I've already prepared and dropped on the floor <laughs> a card blank that is 14 centimetres by 14 centimetres. And uh, I'm not going to bend. Oh, no, actually, um, I have got another one. There we are. This is a card blank, 14 centimetres by 14 centimetres. I like tent fold, so I will pop that one on the top. Stick it on with wet glue. And that's it. So this is from me to you. I hope that you enjoy it. I loved showing you this card. And there's the original. Have lots of fun. And a lovely weekend. Thank you for looking. Bye for now.